Hello, Cancer North Node. Oops. <laughs> this is Samara. You're a feminist alchemist. Welcome to your reading for the April 30th new moon leading into the next new moon. Um, just May 30th, so this reading will go up to about May 29th, maybe a bit of overlap. Uh, this is a general reading, so the messages may not resonate with everybody. Just take what resonates with you and let the rest float away to whoever else in your Cancer North Node Collective needs to hear that message at this time. If you are feeling this reading, give it a like, a thumbs up, and don't forget to subscribe and click the bell to be notified when I upload. This is a North Node reading, my dears. Uh, it's not for any other major placements. No sun, no moon, no rising. No Venus, just North Node. <laughs> So if you're not 100% sure where your North Node is, you can check out my website, feministalchemist.com. There's a North Node chart on there where you can easily find out where the North Nodes were placed at your time of birth. You could also run your birth chart. Both of those links I have put in the description box below. Um, the North Node is a mathematical point that tells you where your greatest source of soul expansion lies. Um, my guides described it to me in some more detail. I've linked that info video in the description box below as well. You can also check out YouTube astrologer Astro Finesse. He details the particularities of what it means to have your North Node in Cancer uh, and that I've also linked below. So, without further ado, I will start your reading for May 2022, and we're going to start with checking out the universal energies um, that are making themselves available to you at this time, or highlighting themselves, because they're all on offer at all times. There's just times when it's easier <laughs> to connect with certain vibrations, and there's times when, you know, ones are meant for, certain ones are meant for our particular soul growth. So that's what I'm looking to do here. If this is your first time at my channel, welcome, welcome, welcome. Ooh, power. This is the Return of Spirit Oracle deck by Cheryl Lee Harnish. Prayers. Cancer North Node. Vibrational. Answer, North Node. And worthy. I was really wondering, I was starting to wonder because I've done, I did Capricorn North Node before I did yours. Don't mind the sound of my chair squeaking. I need a new one. <laughs> so, so, and uh, usually there's at least one, but often two cards from the mirror sign so like Capricorn and Cancer would have two in common one or two in common uh who did I do before Leo and Aquarius so whatever your equally at opposite sign is I usually get similar cards um but just arranged differently and I was starting to get a little worried because all three of these are unique to uh Cancer North Node, but this one was in the Capricorn reading. The so all is right with the world, and and in your uh, at the bottom of the deck is Violet Flame, which a lot of signs have been getting. The Violet Flame is very active. Transmutation time is upon us. If you haven't been feeling it, just or if you have been, here's confirmation. So power, prayers, vibrational, and worthy. Uh, ooh, so I see that May is a month for you to be really stepping into your personal power. Um, 
and that comes from two places at this point, or it's rather uh, supported by two distinct activities. So prayers, uh, which could also be spell crafting, could be affirmations, but the point is word or sound or ritual that seeks to maintain or bring about a certain vibration that's what's going to be um, on offer to you right now. So you'll have, you'll find yourself very well making leaps and bounds in places where you usually would feel challenged by the power of your prayers, um, affirmations, mantras, light coding, if you use sound, if you chant, these type of things, um, anything that changes your vibration. So you're going to have also um, highlighted to you the power of your vibration, which is why being able to manipulate or change your vibration at will, to will your vibration to be something else is going to be an important theme for you, an important learning curve for you in May. Worthy is coming in here because none of this is as powerful if you don't believe that you're worthy of stepping into your power, of the aligning with your abundance with um, your talents unfolding in a way where you know that what you have to offer is exactly what the world needs from you. So that worthiness is a big theme and that can also be bolstered through prayers and vibrations. So this corner is quite important for you. Um, the prayers which as uh, I'll keep calling it prayers, but disclaimer, uh, if you don't pray or if pray is too much of a, you know, has a triggering religious connotation for you, then yeah, know that it means any use of words. They're giving me a way to describe it. Any use of words or sound, even even ritual motions um, that are repeated in order to bring about a change in vibration or manifest an outcome. That's what they're saying. So I'll say prayers, but it can be any words, motions, um, use of tools, ritual tools, ceremony, chanting, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Repeated action to bring about a vibration, a vibrational change, or a manifested outcome. All right. Now that we've cleared that up, I'm going to go right on to your next round of cards here. We have the Sacred Geometry... Activations Oracle and the Sacred Geometry of Relationships by Lawn. I combine them all into one lovely deck. So both decks are uh, Sacred Geometry based. And I've pre-shuffled all of your decks. All of these decks are also linked in the description box if you're interested. Uh, they're mostly affiliate links, I think, except for one deck that's not not on Amazon, but I love it. <laughs> it's one of my favorites. So we have honesty. Divine feminine. Authenticity. Oh. Let's 
see how they want those to come out. Attraction and discernment. I'm trying to figure out. Uh, they came out together and I'm not sure. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> that's good. for the last position or oh, three <laughs> uh, okay of course of course so where do we want this now they want expression is gonna come here in the middle And then we have third eye chakra and Gaia. So that's interesting. You, none of these 5D cards are. do you have shared with the Capricorn uh, North Node people. It's going its own direction, Cancer, which tells me that, that you're in a very unique position amongst the collective right now. Um, very, very unique position. So let's begin here. Um, Honesty, especially coming around the prayers, you can't fool yourself or the divine. The divine is just like, huh? <laughs> like what you're saying is not what you're emanating. So your soul, your higher self, these cards, by the way, sorry, I didn't describe what this round is. Um, this is 5D energy. So this is your higher self at its next phase of expansion which is already done for the sake of this reading it's you in your present self aligning with that um manifestation of yourself um so take these cards as your higher self uh communicating with you what you need to focus on in your in your life in your auric field um in order to reach the next, let's say, stage of expansion or to assist you on the leg of your journey that's coming up in May. So, honesty. You can't fool your higher self um, and you can't fool your guardian angel or the divine or any anyone on your team, right? The issue with that is, is that they can advise you but they can never sway you or willfully make you do something different so if you call out for something that they know is not in vibrational alignment with your higher self they still have to like it's still going to come to you right because that is the magic of free will right um the little bit of of free will that we have you know um, we have the choice to hear our soul, hear our higher self, hear divine um, inspirations and guidance and follow it. We have the free will to not follow it at all. So, so this terms of honesty is more than being honest in your 3D self. It's being honest about what you feel on a deeper soul level, heart level, in your etheric field. There's a lot of stuff that you know about yourself, put it that way, but it feels like you're fantasizing. But in that fantasy, there's a lot of truth, but it may seem 
larger than life, right? And you may feel like you're not worthy of it. So that's where <clears throat> honesty is the courage as well to speak your truth into the world. Divine Feminine is saying, um, <sighs> ooh, While you are powerful, you don't need to push so hard to assert your power. Your power comes in the art of being. And the divine feminine is very much about, you know, being. Being and flowing with cycles, being in your own skin um receiving and holding a sacred space for yourself um like they're showing me a luxurious bathtub and music playing and you know these things are not a waste of time <laughs> right although in you know in patriarchal society those things are considered luxuries as opposed to being a natural balance, balancing factor of life. Like you can't go out and grind from nine to five and then it be something you have earned to relax and feel well in yourself. That is something you are worthy of regardless of how much you do, how much you do, <laughs> right? This is about doing less and being more. Um, and authenticity is about, um, ooh, the reason why you need to resonate kind of more in your being and receiving, first of all, you may be someone who receives a lot of messages, um, but that, and if you're trying to fit that into a box that fits into the masculine patriarchal society, right? It's losing some of its authenticity. Um, so I'm getting the sense of, you know, when you feel like, for example, when women are forced to into this, not just women, there's men, men are subject to things about their looks as well, but I fall onto women as a um, standard for, <laughs> for the, um, being judged by looks because it permeates their lives, their, um, their lives on many levels. Um, and I can't speak from the divine masculine perspective or the masculine perspective. Um, so let me get back to what I was saying. Uh, divine feminine, judged by your looks. Oh yes, women who are feel like they have to balance out the fact that they're beautiful or fight their being seen as just beautiful, like needing to be more than beautiful, like you need to be smart, you need to be strong, you need to be sporty, you need to, you know, and not just be a girly girl. You could just be a girly girl, who cares? Like if that's who you are, that's who you are. And there's a lot of magic that comes from being just who you are, right? Um, and who that is. So there's a lot of tempering the feeling that you have to earn something. Let's just put it that way. There's a lot of tempering, uh, transmuting the feeling that you need to earn something. This is about being in yourself so that you can attract exactly what is aligned with you. Um, in that process, you may attract some things that are not quite aligned with you while you get your worthiness antenna <laughs> working. Uh, and so discernment is going to be very important for you in May. I have a feeling that lots of opportunity will come towards you and a lot of doors are going to open in many aspects of your life as soon as you start even working on this 
prayer is vibrational. And it's because it's also partially because the universe is showing you how real this is. This is not a concept, you know. We are starting to see the real effect of how you think, how you feel affects what you what comes to you in life, what you experience in life. How you think about things affects what you experience in life. Um, your inner world affects your outer world. Your inner world reflects your out. Your outer world reflects your inner world. So discernment becomes, hmm, I sent that out unknowingly, <laughs> you know, or subconsciously, and it's not what I want. So now I have to clean up. Um, I have to say no to that, and I have to also reflect on that interaction so that I can find out what it is in my vibration that keeps bringing that that coloring to situations, you know, that type of, like, offers that are too much work and not enough money, um, offers that don't allow me to exercise this particular skill or be this type of person. Maybe you don't think that that skill is ready. If you doubt that skill, then it will be difficult for you to attract. I'm just going down the career path, for example, a career opportunity that allows you to be, to use that skill and further develop that skill because you do already don't think like, oh, I'm not ready to use that in a public sphere, you know, and that then comes up. You never get the offer to utilize that aspect of your talents, but that's because you're sending off vibes that you're not ready to and that you're not confident in it. Expression... This is this goes along with discernment in that, yeah, once you look at why, once you spend the time to figure out why and what it is in your vibration that's pulling things towards you that you don't like, <laughs> then you need to express it anew, uh, release it, um, and express your true essence. This to me is like authenticity and expression are very closely related and authenticity is 10 and expression is also one plus nine is 10. So the ending of this cycle of a cycle mm, or a period in your life where you felt like you couldn't be your full self um, or you weren't confident enough to be your full self, or you didn't feel that your full self or your authentic self would fit into the environment that you're in. Third eye chakra and Gaia, which is super interesting to me. And Gaia is 28, which is showing me is 2 plus 8 is 10. Again, so you have three tens in here. Um... It's interesting that it's not the crown chakra, it's the third eye chakra. I kind of would have expected the crown to come through, but the third eye chakra is telling me that anything that you can imagine is possible. Um, and you also need to get a handle on what it is you are visualizing. Um, Gaia, I'm feeling, is to stay grounded and they, they're saying to me heaven on earth in the sense that um Believe that everything that you can envision can be reality. And also, um, you should spend time in nature and meditating in nature, meditating on nature. So even if it's just, you know, if you're in a city and there's a little patch of trees, to meditate on that patch of trees, 
you know, if you could sit on a bench and look at it and and let your thoughts, your contemplations run free. Try to connect energetically to the tree. What is it like to be a part of nature in this concrete jungle, for example? You know, there's a lot of... Um, we pass those type of plants and uh, landscaping by a lot in urban landscapes, suburban landscapes even. You may not really notice them, but... You need to be drawn back to the earth. And the idea that the earth has you here for a very particular reason, and you are made the way you are made for a very particular reason. Um, And this is going to be interesting for you, um, Cancer North Node, because with your Capricorn South Node, you are used to to achieving and your feeling of worth to be attached to your achievement. But you're being called to your feeling of worth coming from your connection to everything the earth and the cosmos, right? Um, and being, like, as in you were born worthy of everything. There is no such thing as unworthy, at least not in the divine size. There's only you forgetting that you are worthy. I'm checking now your 3D, what's going on in your physical reality right now. Uh, or in the month of May, that are showing themselves as opportunities for um, expansion. You have the magician. Hmm. So I'm already getting, I, I would do all four cards at first, but they already want me to talk about the magician. So with the magician, they're almost saying that this could be like the only card, <laughs> but I'm not going to let it be your only card. I'm going to ask for more if, if it's so, is okay. Um, but the magician and coming up as a, something that's going on in your life in May. You're going to have, once again, a lot of opportunities come for you. People are starting, are seeing your potential, your ability to create things and to birth things into form. They're seeing your natural ability to create. And with that Capricorn South Node placement, you can create and like with a long trajectory, meaning you can take a lot of small pieces. You also don't and, and, and organize them. You have a, more patience than you probably realize. You have patience for things that other people don't have patience for. The nuts and bolts of things, the back end of things. So <laughs> I was doing a spreadsheet yesterday, so they're showing they're showing me an Excel spreadsheet. Like those type of what other people would find tedious, you find to be like the building blocks of manifestation. Um, and this is kind of in line with your discernment, but of and are you being honest with yourself like is this in line with what you still want to do with your life um and are you picking and choosing where you want to use your manifestation talents let's see if i can get three more cards for cancer north node to describe their situation i really 
Okay, this has never happened before, so <laughs> I'm going to leave it there. Um, and I'll show you what's on the bottom of the deck, which is the moon. But they don't want me. Say, I told you, Cancer North Node, you are unique amongst the signs, the North Node placements this uh, month. They just want the magician in the middle. And I'm going to go to then your um, explaining or tips, guidance to how you can navigate these situations. I mean, they're also telling me with that, that basically, you know, there's no need to make things more complex than they need to be. We have the Ten of Wands in reverse. Which way am I going? Yeah, Justice in reverse. the tower upright. <clears throat> I'll try to be able to see the magician here. I don't know. And the mother of cups in reverse. So <laughs> I'm getting, there's a lot that you actually, if you're asking yourself, what do I need to do? It's not about, it's not really about what you need to do. It's about what you need to stop doing. <clears throat> so if you feel like do, 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 making lists, checking it twice, let's try to get down here. Um, yeah, you may need a list. <laughs> but there's a list of things that you need to stop doing <laughs> or you need to clear out. Ten of Wands is about, you know, being overburdened, burning out. You know, for me, it's also a situation coming to an end because you can't bear the weight of it anymore. Um you know, not all endings. Endings come in many different forms. And the Ten of Wands in reverse to me is saying that um, you need to use this discernment again and this honesty about you know, when you are assessing what you are going to take on and what you're, you don't feel to take on, like what burdens are you taking on? Like wands don't have to be burdens, but when there's 10 of them and there's heavy, it's like you need to start releasing some of those wands or release all of them and start again <laughs> with the one, right? Um, There's a need to release attachments to um, needing to look busy in order to feel like you're doing something or to order in order to feel worthy, in order to feel powerful. You know, they're giving me the example of a micromanager who makes work more difficult just because, you know, they want to be a part of everything. And they have an issue with letting people, you know, shine in their own right and have their own accountability, discernment. Um, there's an energy of you needing to preserve your power. And understanding that, yes, your power is limitless, but it becomes limited when you focus your power on things that are not worthy of you. Um, 
which you may not see because you need to work on your own (laughs) self-worth, right? Uh, Especially, it may not be in every aspect of life. And even the people who feel that they're actually quite confident may be, it's like we all have. Everybody on this planet has some little stickler of unworthiness. It's like a, it's a collective wound, (laughs) right? So this could be why, Cancer, your reading is so unique amongst it. You, especially with all this yellow of the solar plexus, you have a lot of yellow. See, they're now showing it to me yellow there's yellow and green there's like a yellowy gold down here there's a bit of yellow in here but this also has a lot of that's all the colors um but these three for sure there's a lot of solar plexus energy so self-confidence self-worth that can very well be one of your tasks here and we are going to look into that at the end of the reading is your sole purpose um actually the next round will be sole purpose sorry the train is passing um justice in reverse hmm so um As much as other people are important for you, Cancer North Node, like building your relationships, Cancer North Node, a lot of people focus on it being like, oh, you need to have a family. Oh, it's about kids. It's not necessarily all about that. It's about creation as well. It's about softening um, into your emotions. It's And yes, there could be familial relationships, um, nurturing siblings being part of a family unit but that doesn't mean you know that it's about marriage kids um parenting not exclusively anyway and that also that could be more abstract in this case it's about don't sacrifice your authenticity for the sake of what you feel is fair. So I'm getting the impression that you're sticking with certain things that don't really resonate with you because you feel like, oh, I made a commitment or it's not fair for me to leave or I'm going to put someone in a hard spot if I leave, right? But that is their own growth to go through as well Um, because the longer you stay in situations where you're getting the short end of the stick, or at least you feel you're getting the short end of the stick, like bitterness will not serve you, (laughs) right? And it will make you feel like focus on this feeling of unworthiness. And it proves to you your unworthiness because you're not getting what it is that you feel that you are, um, at least that you rationally think that you should get, even though deeper inside you may be projecting a feeling of not being quite worthy so you need to stay out of situations where it doesn't feel balanced for you and where um you are um underappreciated so don't stay for someone else's sake that's the point of that one uh the tower yeah, this involves you have you're going to have to cut ties with certain projects, certain relationships, certain arrangements, whether it means like you have to move. So I'm getting the impression that someone like, for example, their living environment does not is not conducive to the lifestyle that they want to live. It doesn't really give them the environment that makes them feel like they can do this divine feminine or creative work if you're a creative person and you like if you're a writer and you need quiet and you live somewhere that's really noisy and not just like your roommates but also the neighborhood your roommates may take it personally that you want to leave 
that living arrangement, but it's not serving what you have identified as your new purpose, right? Um, and what the divine is showing you is your new purpose. Um, so... So there's that. Uh, and yeah, anything that you see that you've attracted to yourself that you don't like, you should get rid of. That's it. <laughs> you know, uh, in this case, the divine is really not being a diplomat. There's no diplomacy in your spread. Um, the mother of cups in reverse is actually to me saying like there there is no diplomacy in your spread that this is about you. It is about you. You need space for all of the things that feed you energetically. They say that you already know what they are. Um, you So other people's feelings in this case, there are times when other people's feelings matter. This is not one of them. <laughs> it really isn't. And if you need help with bolstering your self-esteem and your resolve to have difficult conversations, for example, um, then use your affirmations for that as well. Mm. And they're saying that you could also with your, you can, when you're going into a situation that you feel it's difficult, resist the urge to have all of these fantasies about what the outcome may be, like how it's going to play out, what the conversation is going to be like. They're going to get angry or they're going to say this, they're going to say that. Resist that urge altogether and start picturing that it's going to be a peaceful um, closure. There'll be closure, there'll be acceptance, and whatever is the best for both parties involved will happen. And that's the trust that you need to have. And that's where you have to keep going on with these prayers here, which to me is connecting like all of the chakras, but is driven by this solar plexus energy of I am confident and honest enough with myself to speak my heart's truth into being, right? Um, and that's it as well. Like, you don't want to leave a situation hoping that someone gets their just desserts, right? <laughs> or, like, revenge or leaving bitter, which is why it's so important for you not to go into situations that feel unbalanced to you. Um, so... Set the intentions that conflicts resolve themselves easily and for the highest and the solution found, even if that is hard and ways, is in the highest good of everybody involved. We're going to look to your sole purpose here. So, as I said in the very beginning, this is quite a general reading, so um, I can look into the sole purpose of the Cancer Northwood Collective, and there'll be some commonalities, but there'll be more overarching themes than anything else. <clears throat> I'm using the Lightseer's Tarot by Chris Ann. Hmm. So this is uh, what your soul has come here to do. We're looking at the bottom of the deck again. We have the page of wands. Look at the wands, see? <laughs> the ten of wands and the page of wands. So um, I'll make that connection just now if, if you didn't uh, <laughs> catch on to why that is significant. So... Uh, The reason why, I'll start with that, the reason why the Page of Wands is so significant here at the bottom of the deck for me is to say that underlying everything is this learning how to, not just to manifest, but to choose where your energies are most needed and most valuable. Um, and the page of wands is wands is a feminine and youthful 
energy, a bit naive, even if you will, but that is the learning process, you know. Um, yeah, so that's why the ten to me, the ten of wands is so common for you, Cancer North Node, because you end up taking on more than you want to or then feels balanced for you because of your Capricorn South Node placement, which tells you that your worth is um, based on, you know, this earthy masculine energy. And it's not a bad thing to achieve things. It's just that you achieve them in a different way. <laughs> and it's not about um, all of the executing all of these tasks. Um, four of Wands, so your soul of purpose. I think I'm going to run out of data of space on this card. So if it cuts off, I have to pay attention to that so I can switch over. Anyway, Four of Wands. So you have come here to, <laughs> to have a celebratory family oriented life now family oriented does not have to once again it doesn't have to be kids it doesn't have to be marriage and it doesn't have to be your blood relatives either it could be a family that you have found a soul family or friends and uh like-minded people that you have assembled as important people in your life you are meant to be here and connect with your soul tribe and you they're showing me like the magic flowing from the hands and to co-create some a really happy place on earth now even if it's just your corner of the neighborhood that's the happy place the point is you have created a portal a hub of happiness right? and it may feel like not enough for you at first, or it may be a complete relief to realize that you're just, you know, creating happy homes and happy spaces is what you're here to do. And you can only create those one by one. You can't create 10 at a time, right? Oops. Death and rebirth in reverse. The way that you're connected to people and the way that you feel a sense of accountability and responsibility may, it seems that it's pre-programmed into you that it's not so easy for you to move from one happy home to the next one because you feel like you've created it. So why not stay there? <laughs> right? Even if that home starts to not be, like even after your work is long done, um, is what I'm getting and it's kind of mm, wanting things to stay the same and resisting the change that is inevitable and that also could be because uh, that even you may even have people around you who are like um convincing you that your purpose is to be stationary um and it may not be so i'm getting the vibe of possibly being married more than once now i'm not saying that if you're happily married right now i'm not saying that you're going to get divorced or anything like that but it may have taken you a few serious like really deep relationships that shook you to your core before you find the person and one of that those reasons is though is because not be, not just because you're resisting the change but because for you to find the people that align with you you have to be willing to do the seven of wands which is being like standing out and standing in your power and putting out the beacon of your vibration. 
if you're not putting that out, then you draw things to you that are, you're a vibrational magnet. We all are, but you are a really special one. <laughs> and if you're not standing in the, this is who I am, then the people who will really embrace that don't find you. And then you end up with all of these burdens um, that people put on you and even characteristics that people put on you. Okay, the card is going to stop. It's going to run out, so I'm going to switch cards and be right back. All right. So <laughs> let me remember where I was. Yes, Seven of Wands. So now we're at the Ace of Cups. Ace of Cups in reverse. Ooh. Um... I almost it almost pains me to tell you this, but sadness and disappointment is built into your purpose. <laughs> I'm sorry. Now that doesn't mean that um, you know you're going to be plagued by it forever. But it's more like you probably experience it a little bit more than others or your like your receptors. You're built to feel it deep, more deeply than others, because part of what you're here to do is to go from the Ace of Cups in reverse to the Four of Wands, is to do that cycle of um, going from heartache, disappointment, um, needing to be soft with yourself. Um, and understanding that regardless of what has happened, you are still divine, you are still worthy. Um, and to like not lose yourself, not lose your spark in those situations. So remember I was saying it may have taken you a few tries to come back and find that partner. You may have gone through different studies, different careers, you may have lived different places, searching for the place where you feel is, you know, resonates the most with you. But the reason why it takes time for you to find the places where you resonate is because the work has to do with you really getting into your vibration. And you may be a very powerful person with words, with words and ritual. So use that Capricorn South Node kind of planning practical element to get past this hump <laughs> to get past this uh, resisting if you're resisting it on an emotional level then hit it on a practical level this is what they're telling me um and it, because it will take time and repetition and honesty you know, in what you, let's say you're reciting mantras and you write your own mantras, it, it will take, you won't believe it at first. You have to say it over and over again, like literally drilling it into yourself so that you can stand in your power. And things about being in your authentic self and standing in your power is something that, and recognizing your light, like these are words that they're giving me to tell you should be the basis of at least one of your regular mantras or rituals. It should be centered around honoring the uniqueness that is you, um, which means that you forgive those who can't appreciate that or forgive yourself for all the times when you've allowed people to um, treat you as less than worthy or you haven't shown yourself, shown that spark, and it's put you into situations where, you know, you are chronically being belittled or um, not getting to shine. So going from the Ace of Cups to the Four of Wands, the Ace of Cups in reverse to the Four of Wands, finding that cup of love in yourself when it feels like it's not out there around you is... Um, and then attracting those things to you. That's part of what you're here to do. I'm going to grab 
a, some final oracles. We'll start with the Queen of the Moon Oracle by Stacey DeMarco. And that one came very quickly. 23, Gratitude, Last Quarter Moon. Oh, and uh, the day that I'm reading this for you, Cancer North Node, is... Um, uh, the new moon is tomorrow. So... We are in the last quarter moon phase right now, <laughs> um, if not even further. You know, uh, I forget what they call it when it's like you just have a sliver before the new moon. So I'm going to read directly from the book. Because I believe they picked that card for a reason and the book will have its correspondences that we need to hear. So, um, gratitude, be where you are. And be thankful. There is always something to be grateful for, no matter your suffering. Gratitude raises a lower vibration to a higher one. Do not allow yourself to be surrounded by too many negative people. Mm. <laughs> I think that's what we said this ten of uh, wands in reverse. Mm. Life is conspiring for you. The affirmation is, I joyfully turn my attention to what I'm grateful for. As we enter the last quarter moon on the lunar cycle, the energies begin to turn towards surrender and release, to let go of what we no longer need. It behoves us to pay attention to what we have right now, both positive and negative. This attention paying and focus allows us to wisely discern discernment and be grateful for all of it. Yes, all of it. Because the nasty stuff, the stuff that is making us suffer right now, it already happened and we can take wisdom from this. However, now it's going. Um, the Waxing Crescent 4 and the Dark Moon are going to sort that for you. And what we have left is the good stuff. And frankly, most of it is going to be great. Taking some time out on this moon to list a few things you feel grateful for will raise your vibrations and banish any resistance you have to ditching old outmoded patterns. Doing this also turns your powerful focus away from a story you may have started to believe of everything gone wrong or that life does terrible things to you. Gratitude is a balancer. In fact, it normally tips the scales to the positive and the companion stone or metal is ocean jasper. I'm also of Cancer North Node, and I was just uh, choosing crystals to lay out yesterday. <laughs> and I grabbed the Ocean Jasper, but I wasn't sure. Now I know that it was meant to be. So, um, yes, gratitude and keeping your vibration positive. Um, <sighs> you've come to do some... Emotional heavy lifting, you know, it is turning this cup around by being um, grateful and focusing on the positive so that you are attracting, let's see, you have attraction down here, you're attracting not more of the same um, fluff. I don't know why. <laughs> anyway, uh, and yeah, that's all I'm going to say about that. I'll check uh, messages from the guides by Stephen Von Prague. And these are just quick messages from the divine, from our helpful people. Our helpful people who are not people. <laughs> most of them helpful beings what messages do we have for cancer north node love is your energy mm, i'll put that right there between <sighs> believe me i know that sometimes that transmutation can be quite difficult so but love is your energy if you keep finding it finding places, even in the smallest places, you will be able to amplify it. Much like observing that tree 
in the city. <laughs> Love is its energy, even amongst all the concrete. Is there another message for Cancer North Node in this deck? I feel like yes. Ooh, give without expectation. Ooh, yeah, give without expectation. And also, because when you give without expectation, you can leave if it's not serving you anymore. You can leave as opposed to saying, I have to stick around because that person owes me this money or because... Um, you know, I deserve to get this out of it. Uh, you know, I don't want it to be all for nothing. It wasn't all for nothing. And that's what uh, you have. Love is your energy. Give without expectation. Don't go into situations and leave situations that build bitterness or resentment in you because your vibrational field is attracting like on a very at a very high rate and you'll start to notice that um in the month of may the bottom of the deck you have accept struggles as lessons so love is your energy cancer north node i'll leave you with that i wish you all the best um for the month of may if you are so inclined you can check out my new monthly series grounding into gaia since you got the gaia card here um i'm going to there should be right now somewhere on the screen a card <laughs> a link to get to that video and there'll be another one coming up for the month of may and that's it so until next time take care be well and stay blessed. Bye for now.